Hello, in this podcast we will discuss about Warren Buffett's 7 Biggest Investing Mistakes. But before that if you want to read full article about it then the link of the article is in description. Also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel Monist View. We have all heard of Warren Buffett's successful investments in companies like Coca-Cola, American Express, Apple, Bank of America, Moody's, Kraft Heinz, etc. He is one of the most idolized and revered investors globally, with a wealth of more than 100 billion US dollars. But there is more to Warren Buffett. In addition to being a brilliant investor, Buffett has graciously shared his learnings with millions of people worldwide. And one of his famous quotes is about learning from others' mistakes. While it's good to learn from your mistakes, it's better to learn from other people's mistakes, says Buffett. So, following his advice, we will examine Warren Buffett's seven big investing mistakes, and we will try to derive lessons from them. 1. Dexter Shoe Company In 1993, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway purchased Dexter Shoe Company. Buffett calls it the worst deal he had ever made. To be precise, Buffett made more than one big mistake in buying Dexter Shoe Company. The first mistake was a miscalculation about Dexter's prospect. Berkshire bought Dexter on account of its high return on capital employed, but they didn't account for the competitive threat the company faced with cheap shoes coming from countries like China. Buffett made a note of this in 1999. He wrote that it was becoming challenging for domestic producers to compete effectively in the shoe business. And that is because approximately 93% of the 1.3 billion pairs of shoes came from abroad. So, the first lesson is that you must check a company's durable competitive advantage before investing in it. Durable competitiveness is no longer a good-to-have factor. It is a must-have factor for any business. Buffett's second mistake was that he did not purchase Dexter Shoe Company with cash. Instead, he used $433 million worth of Berkshire Hathaway stock. One share of Berkshire's class of share was around $15,000 in 1993. But today, it is valued at 517,000 US dollars. Thus, the Dexter move did not cost Berkshire shareholders 433 million US dollars for a company that came to be worth nothing. That mistake cost the shareholders of Berkshire a princely sum of 15 billion dollars. Therefore, the lesson is never to sell your winners to make risky bets. 2. Tesco Tesco is a UK-based grocery chain. By 2012, Berkshire Hathaway owned more than 5% of the business. By 2013, it was getting apparent that something was wrong with Tesco, and Berkshire had pared down its stake to 3.7%, representing an investment of nearly $1.7 billion. Over the next few months, Tesco's share price continued on a downward spiral. It fell almost 50% due to declining sales and increased competition from discount retailers. During the same time, there was also an accounting scandal and the company was under investigation by the UK's financial regulators. Now, Buffett's mistake was that he delayed the sale of Tesco stocks, and he did that despite having read the troubling signs. As a result, the delay cost Berkshire a loss of around 444 million US dollars. Therefore, the lesson here is that conviction is also key to selling. Just as you don't invest without conviction, don't hold on to a stock if you lack conviction in it. 3. Energy Future Holdings Warren Buffett rarely makes investing decisions without consulting Charlie Munger, but he revealed one such mistake in his 2013 letter. Buffett purchased bonds of Energy Future Holdings Corporation worth 2.1 billion US dollars. Unfortunately, it also turned out to be a mistake worth 873 million US dollars. Energy Future Holdings relied on coal-fired power plants to produce electricity. Buffett's purchase of their high-yielding bonds in 2007 was a bet that the price of natural gas would rise. As a result, the coal-based business will be more competitive and profitable. However, the price of natural gas plunged from its 2007 levels. It caused massive losses to Energy Future, and the company ultimately declared bankruptcy in 2014. In the end, Berkshire sold the 2.1 billion US dollars worth of bonds in 2013 at a loss of 873 million US dollars. Warren Buffett humbly declared that he had miscalculated the gain-loss probabilities of the transaction. He cited a lesson that it is always good to get a second opinion. You can seek that advice from a business partner or a trusted confidant when making big decisions. There are a few more lessons we can draw from this episode. The first is the risk of predicting, especially something like the price of natural gas or oil, or gold or even an individual stock. The second lesson we can gather from Buffett's mistake is the utility of purchasing high-yielding junk bonds. Berkshire Hathaway is a huge conglomerate. 
it can afford to lose some money pursuing such high risk and high return opportunities. However, a default like this can be financially disastrous for retail investors. In that context, do try to avoid instruments where the return on capital is highly questionable. 4. Lubrizol and David Sokol In 2011, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway came under fire. David Sokol, chairman of many of Berkshire's subsidiaries, had pitched Buffett Lubrizol Corporation as a potential takeover target. But he did that even as he owned stocks in Lubrizol Corporation, a chemicals company. Mr. Sokol's non-disclosure of his stock ownership to Buffett violated Berkshire's insider trading rules. And while Berkshire bought Lubrizol for roughly 9 billion US dollars, David Sokol also earned some 3 million US dollars in profits from the transaction. Berkshire's internal investigation revealed that Sokol was deliberately vague on how he came to own the Lubrizol stock. Sokol did not articulate that he had bought the shares only after meeting the bankers who had come forward with the acquisition proposal. In Buffett's own words, it was a matter of simple ethics. But it's a statement that came only after initially admitting that no one was at fault here. In this case, David Sokol and Warren Buffett both made mistakes. And the investing lesson to follow here is not to be overly trusting. So, have a checklist, follow a process, and don't hesitate to ask more questions than what you think is necessary. If it's your reputation on the line, you cannot afford to take it easy. 5. Amazon So far, the mistakes we have seen were all errors of commission. But here's a mistake from Buffett that qualifies more as an error of omission. In 2017, Buffett admitted that he had followed Amazon.com for a long time but never chose to invest in it. In his own words, he said, I was too dumb to realize. I did not think Jeff Bezos could succeed on the scale he has. Buffett had underestimated the brilliance of Amazon's execution in two industries. One is the company's dominance in e-commerce, and two, its success in the cloud with Amazon Web Services. The lesson to draw from here is that of compatibility and evolution. The traditional Buffett approach is not tuned to buying a stock that trades at a rich price-earning ratio of 80, 90, or 100. It was where Amazon was in 2019, and add to this the fact that Buffett turns a blind eye to technology companies. They are not within his circle of competence. In that context, it's not difficult to understand how costly an error of omission can become. So, it is crucial to have a circle of competence, but it is even better to evolve and expand that circle over time. 6. Google The Berkshire Hathaway portfolio does not include any stock from Alphabet or Google. And this is something that Warren Buffett deeply regrets. Google first caught Buffett's attention because of a Berkshire-owned subsidiary, Geico. It is in the auto insurance space. So, it relies heavily on Google's advertising platform to acquire customers. Buffett admits that he should have made better sense of Google's business and outlook over the long term. Again, Buffett's limited technical knowledge might have contributed to this missed opportunity. Although in this case, the opportunity was right under his nose. 7. Berkshire Hathaway It might come as a surprise, but Warren Buffett's biggest investing mistake was purchasing Berkshire Hathaway in 1962. At that time, Berkshire Hathaway was a failing textile business. Nevertheless, it qualified under the classical Benjamin Graham model of identifying the cigar butt business. This favorable financial evaluation got a young Warren Buffett interested in the company, and he started buying the stock in tranches. Then in 1964, the owner of the firm, Seabury Stanton, offered to buy out Buffett's shares at $11.50. Buffett agreed to it, but when the offer letter came in, the offer price was down to $11.32. It infuriated Buffett. He purchased a controlling stake in Berkshire Hathaway, and then fired Stanton from the company. While Buffett got his revenge, he was left holding a significant investment in a failing business. Until this day, Buffett remarks that it was the dumbest stock that he ever bought. Buffett carried this burden of a failing textile business for 20 additional years. He admits that if he had put in the cash flows to other businesses like the insurance companies, Berkshire would have been twice what it is now. By his calculations, Buffett's purchase of Berkshire Hathaway was a mistake worth 200 billion US dollars. And the lesson here is that being emotional does not help in investing. Now what is the bottom line over here? There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. This popular adage communicates the idea that it is impossible to get something for nothing. 
If you remember this as an investor, you can easily avoid pump and dump or any such manipulative schemes. Like all of us, Warren Buffett is a human, and he has had his fair share of mistakes. In this blog, we picked up seven of Buffett's biggest mistakes. Hopefully, you have learned something new in the process, and you will look to avoid similar blunders in your financial journey. So, thank you guys for joining with us for this podcast. If you want to read full article about it then the link of the article is in description. Also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel Monist View. Over here Shubham from Monist View signing off.